Thank you for inviting me here. Uh, the reason why I got into politics in 2010, but even um, back in um, 1999, I ran for the mayor of this place. Um, what it is, is it, um, I want to fight for people's rights and civil rights. Uh, my life was destroyed uh, by the city council and your mayor of the city. And that's why I decided to get into politics, to fight the, cor the corruption that we have today. I am sick and tired of people being disrespected. What we need is someone strong, someone who's willing to stand up for the people of this Fresno city. You know, our, our district right now has been neglected since 2010. There's a lot of people very upset about what's going on in the neighborhoods. Um, I want to be there for these people. I want to fight for these people. I want to make sure that they can trust me. I have integrity. And that's why I decided to run for Fresno city. My name is Mark Joseph Castro. And first and foremost, let me thank the POWPA and all the other candidates for attending and everyone in the audience. Um, you know, first and foremost, let me just start off by saying that as a lifelong resident of Fresno, it is an absolute pleasure to be running for Fresno City Council District 1. I grew up, you know, in the district pretty much my entire life. I was a graduate of Central High, and, you know, I went to Notre Dame and Murray University, and then when I came back, I really got to ascertain the opportunity to understand what policy is and the effects upon it on, on our daily lives, and that was what pretty much jolted me towards uh, ascertaining a law degree and understanding the complexities of what legislation is and its impact upon our daily lives. And that's why I really want to go out and represent the city of Fresno as our District 1 candidate. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Kerry Catalano, candidate for Fresno City Council District 1. Thank you again for the opportunity to be here, and thank you all for being here. This election is about what our future holds for each and every one of us, not in District 1, but throughout the city of Fresno. Over the last six years, we've been faced with some very, very difficult challenges ahead of us that were behind us. And as we look forward, I'm running for city council because I believe of a few things. That local government should work well for everybody throughout every district. That every individual matters throughout the city. There's been many criticisms throughout the King, I'm sorry, can you all hear me? There's been criticisms by many in District 1 that District 1 residents feel that they do not matter, that the local government is not responding, that public safety officials are not responding to our immediate needs when there are property crimes, violent crimes. Oh, I'm sorry, one minute, it's very short. <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much. My name's Rebecca Ronhead. I have lived in District 1 for 13 years. I've been a social worker over 20, actually close to 30, and the reason I'm running is because I'm it. I have the track record of working with the current city council. I'm on the police chief's advisory board. I started a group 14 years ago called the Central California Criminal Justice Committee, where we convinced first Mayor Logtree and then Swearingen to hire an independent auditor to oversee excessive force issues among other things um, that were intended to squash frivolous lawsuits. I think that's a big deal to the taxpayer, not to you, and to us. Now people say to me, Rebecca, you're intelligent, you're educated, you're experienced, you're a whole package. There's just one thing wrong with you. And I say, what's that? And they say, you're too strong. Really? If I was a man, would you say that? I don't think. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Miranda Soria. Um, I want to first also thank the WAPA, uh, the Fresno Metro uh, Black Chamber, and the Goodwin uh, Bar for hosting this. Uh, born and raised here in the Valley, I had the great fortune of being able to attend some of the best public universities in our state, uh, like Berkeley and UC Davis. I'm running for elected office because I believe in the city of Fresno, and I believe that we can do better. Um, we definitely need leadership that is strong, that is going to fight for um, our families, and that is really going to uh, take make decisions that are going to improve our city. I am talking uh, today. That's why I'm actually dressed this way because I just came from uh, talking to the voters. That's really who matters, and our residents matter. And that's why I'm, I've been involved in the community uh, with Fresno EOC, with Hands On Central California, and Fresno Barrios Unidos. Okay, we are now. Uh just moving to District 3. You know, I, I know everybody's up there together, but I'm just trying to find a way to kind of keep these <laughs> separate so people know what district you're in. So District 3, I think we have uh, Barbara Hunt. My name is Barbara Hunt. I was born here in Fresno, California. 
Matter of fact, I was born in Red Cross State Avenue here on Bullet Street. My mother is Hans Cafe. I've been here for 67 years. My son Ron Cox played for Chicago Bears and got that Green Bay Super Bowl ring. I love the city of Fresno. I was born here. It's personal. The people that was here in the past, they would look for a shopping center, they look for schools, they look for grocery stores, places, banks. We had nothing over here. The only thing we have over here, jack rabbit lizards and stuff that was still out there eating in my garden. We need someone here that's going to bring these factories, jobs, education, make a place where these kids will have an equal opportunity like all these other seven districts. We still have the same thing. All the money taken from Southwest Fresno, going north, and we need the money to stay here in West Fresno. And we need to put West Fresno on the map because by law, they call us the Edison District. They the General Plan 2035, but we're not an Edison District. We're Southwest Fresno. They turned the corner, made us Southeast Fresno, and Southwest, our money is going to stand. I can't see your sign, but thank you very much. <laughs> My name is Eddie Rashad. Uh, this is my mom right here. Uh, she inspired me to run, and uh, I'm here to uh, bring, I'm here to revitalize this area. This area's been neglected, it's the same story, but we got the votes behind us this time. So we're here, we're gonna continue to push forward. Okay, Mr. Baines by phone. district. Uh, some of the stuff that hasn't been done yet, I understand we do have a big district, but uh, a lot of things need to be changed. Uh, I know Fresno, it's a big, big town. Uh, I don't want to focus on one specific area, uh, like some of the, some of the stuff that's going on right now, and want to make sure that not, not one part of the town is connected just because we're concentrating on another. My name is Clint Olivier. I was elected to the Fresno City Council in June of 2010 and sworn in in December of 2010. And during that time I've been able to build what I believe is a fantastic coalition of business and labor. I'm endorsed by the Chamber of Commerce. I'm endorsed by our firefighters union, I'm endorsed by our bus drivers union, and I'm endorsed by their lifesavers, our friends over at American Ambulance. You know, when I took over the seat from Henry T. Perea, Henry took me aside and he asked me to do one thing. He said, Clint, just build the park. And he was talking about Martin Ray Riley Park. Tomorrow, we are going to be breaking ground on Martin Ray Riley Park and it will be built for the people in the district that I represent. I'm very proud of my record in District 7. I'm happy to come here uh, with these fine folks and defend it. Not only did we build the park, we pick up illegal dumping. We removed 60 tons of trash. We closed 16 <coughs> alleys. Very proud of my record in District 7. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name, uh, of course, is Mark Gonzalez. I'm, uh, I started from uh, humble family beginnings. I was born in Mexico, brought here as a four-year-old grew up in Reedley. Learned farm labor, learned hard work, and the number one thing my dad taught me is respect for law, respect for government. So uh, I think he cursed me. I've been in government all my life since uh, 19. I'm the only former police officer up here. I uh, started here in Fresno, Fresno PD. I went to San Jose, I was with the California State Police. I was also a detective, detective sergeant in Huron, and also a uh, Derrick County Deputy Sheriff. <coughs> 
I also have a uh, labor relations background. I retired from the state of California for the uh, ALRB, which defended farm workers' rights to unionize. Very close friends with uh, Dolores Huerta, Artie Rodriguez, many folks. I uh, consulted and I was asked to run by Henry Maria Sr. I'm supported by him and also Henry T. Maria Jr. Longtime friends and supporters. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Mike Wells. Surrounding the for City Council in District 7. It's kind of an outgrowth of the, the neighborhood uh, advocacy that began oh, eight years ago or so, and I lived in a downtown neighborhood that we felt that we were being left behind by the administration, by City Council, by redevelopment. And so we got together and we, we asked, first we did what we could to improve our neighborhood, and then we asked the city to come alongside and from that, I became involved with the Downtown Neighborhood Community Plans and the General Plan Update Committees. And the more I learned about it, the more I just uh, became convinced that the decision-making that happens at City Hall needs to be driven by our communities. My work in Fresno Metro Ministry and the Building Healthy Communities Collaborative uh, helped me to focus on the planning efforts of our city. We'll talk more about that. those things later. <laughs> Okay, we'll start again with uh, District 1 candidates for our first question. First question. What do you think can have the highest, can have the biggest impact on improving job prospects for African Americans and support economic development for local businesses? What do you think can have the biggest impact on improving job prospects for African Americans and support economic development for local businesses. Now, first of all, we got to bring jobs in Fresno, and what it is is um, I'm here for everybody. You know, equal rights for everyone, and make it as simple as possible. Uh, we develop training for these people. You know, for different races, for low-income families, um, people who are trying real hard to uh, to make it in this uh, city. We don't have no jobs, but the first thing we need to do is start uh, bringing jobs to Fresno, like um, automobile uh, manufacturing, electronic uh, corporation, computer corporate. That's the only way we get anything solved. We first have to have jobs. If you have something that you, uh, we can always promise something. And I'm really telling you guys right now that I can always promise you something but right now, today, is that all our promises have been broken today. If I get in there, I'll tell you one thing, you will have jobs. Thank you. Thank you. I think one of the, uh, you know, it's important to note that as a child I grew up with a person, um, her name was Helen Myers, and she took over the Mendez General store. And this store was owned by someone else, and her employment and her like dedication to the store the owner of the store, was, which is a Caucasian male, handed the store over to her because he had dedication and she, sh she showed the ability to be able to leave the store even though that he had children. And it was just that dedication and fortitude which allowed that to be able to happen. And my slogan and, and what I'm trying to do in the city of Fresno is establish better jobs so we can create a better Fresno. However, I think one of the most important things that we can do to have a big impact on the prospects for African Americans to employment and businesses is to offer some sort of mentorship program at the junior high level and then also at the, uh, the junior level of high school. It's being able to understand that there's opportunity for everyone. As a minority, I understand that and I understand the travails of sweet faith and I want to be able to extend that to everyone. Thank you. The biggest key to economic development for everybody in the city of Fresno is one thing, a better educational system. Our educational system has failed each and every community in the city of Fresno. Several years ago, we formed Learn to Earn, which is an adult education initiative that was formed with the public and private sector of community colleges and local educational institutions. 69,000 people in the city of Fresno do not have a high school equivalent. 69,000. You cannot recruit viable businesses unless we are able to help the individuals receive a GED equivalent. You can no longer go to a community college or a vocational education program without that. So we form Learn to Earn, which is a pathway for individuals, a pathway for individuals to get their preparatory classes to take their GED. 
since the inception of that nearly three years ago, nearly 2,900 residents in the city of Fresno have gotten their GED and have been able to go on to a higher level of education, which in turn can help them get a job. Thank you. I say we go deeper. There's the Mayor's Program, and then there's what I call the hardcore unemployed. And it's not just the African American community. It's everybody. We need to go deeper, and we need to teach. We've got to remove the veneer of shame in not being able to read and write. <clears throat> Start with that. And we need to approach a population that has stopped looking for, and as a result, have stopped being counted. They're not looking for work because uh, they don't know how to fill out an application. There's no shame in that. I agree with Carrie. It is the educational system, but it's much, much more than that. We need to go deeper. As a community worker, a community advocate, I have the roots, I have the wherewithal, but more importantly, I have the will to address a population that this city has given up on. things that I believe that need to be done. I, I do believe um, that education is um, one way to really begin to address this um, problem. Not only that impacts African Americans, it impacts Latinos and other um, communities of color in our, in our city. And I am an example of how education can really transform uh, a person and a family and provide opportunities. I come from farm worker parents and through my education was able to uh, become an attorney and now uh, be able to contribute uh, to uh, the community. So I do believe in really building the partnerships with our community colleges, with our high school, um, to strengthen uh, our education and really encourage uh, high school graduation and create those programs that are going to provide the work the workforce uh, that we need for um, the jobs that need to be attracted to our community to really improve um, the poverty level that we have. Well, job products, job prospects are very important tonight. I believe that one of the main reasons that I have the endorsement of the Central Labor Council and the affiliate organizations like the builders, the carpenters, the plumbers, the stationary engineers, the operating engineers, the guys who drive the bulldozers, is because they know that I'm supportive of the infrastructure projects that the city council can also can actually have an impact on, um, like welcoming and facilitating the develop the uh, building of the high speed rail system here in Fresno. The bus rapid transit system should be encouraged, and that's going to bring some good uh, good paying jobs. The downtown and neighborhood revitalization and the infrastructure that's involved in that are all going to be good paying jobs. And those are the kind of jobs we need, not the minimum wage, Walmart type jobs that uh, I think we've been settling for too much. In the past. Thank you for uh, the question again. It's very uh, pertinent. Uh, I believe we need uh, more things here in uh, West Fresno and also uh, the entire uh, city of Fresno. We need to bring companies that will bring jobs here. Companies like uh, from Silicon Valley. Land is cheap here. We do have uh, an abundance of labor. There are also quality, technical, skill jobs that we need to provide tax cuts and other incentives to those companies. We also need to liaison with families because it starts in the home, folks. Mom and dad, or if there's a single parent, we need to liaison uh, with families, uh, establish a uh, liaison office for, for the city to reach out and also intervene, interact with families to uh, get them goal-oriented for education. And uh, also we need an infrastructure, we need to enhance the streets, sidewalks, etc. I love Fresno and uh, by the way my son went to Edison Computech and he loved him coming out here. So uh, that and we need more. So we need city involvement. Thank you. Thank you. There's dignity in all work. I don't say no to any jobs for District 7 or any jobs in the city of Fresno as a District 7 council member. The biggest impact for African Americans is the same thing for everyone. A rising tide lifts all boats. Find a way to cut fees and taxes. We can get four or five votes and make that happen on the council. We've done it in the past. Because companies can't hire if they can't expand. Boom, four votes. We can do it. 
we've done it before. When I was approached by a constituent group of taxi drivers that said, these city regulations are making us crazy. We have to turn in our cabs when they hit seven years old. I took it, I wrote an ordinance, we gave them three more years, and God knows they're gonna put another two, 300,000 miles on them in that period of time. They'll have to jump the cars anyway. But that is how the council worked. We worked for these people, they came to us, we repealed an oppressive regulation, and they put more people to work. I think that's outstanding. My name is Barbara Hunt. I have my master's in government from California School Board Association. I've got my associate of science degree in human service. I graduated from Edison High School. I have my certificate of completion in alcoholism counseling. Now you're talking about African Americans. I'm a Negro. We was we had a family community. Uh, we worked everywhere. I mean, skills, got jobs, but the system tore up my family down. They took the men's out of the homes. They put these uh, welfare programs in. They took everything we had. Our kids, they said drugs, prostitution, everything. And I said, around here in Washington, bring this stuff around here. What we need is these folks to let us along and give us equal opportunity like they give everybody else. Quit taking our kids out of school and charter school and put them in charter school, take them out because they have a behavior problem. We don't have a behavior problem. That's the way we act. No culture acts the same. We all are different. These kids are hardworking kids. All they need is a job. They work harder than any kids around them. They need some employment. I know that we can get jobs, employment, that got me the video up here, works with the Department of Education. I'm, I'm going to school work for eight years. We can, we can do it. All we need is to have the love of God and help people, people to help us. Thank you very much. Well, um, I'm letting everybody know uh, we have a $1 billion budget in the city of Fresno. That's enough money to give everybody in the city $2,000 a piece. If I did my math right. But unfortunately, the money's not being allocated to this area. So that's one of the things that I want to do at City Council is make sure a portion of that budget comes over here so we can repay the broken roads, so we can renovate and develop the empty lots, the abandoned buildings, bring more uh, lease offices so people can open their small businesses, give people grants uh, to open their small businesses and get the city going in the way it can be. Uh, I can't really speak on other districts and other areas because I'm representing District 3. This is my district and that's what we so direly need over here. Uh, it's been neglected for a long time and uh, we're here to really Thank you very much. I, I think that in high school, if there's a, we, we have a liaison or counselors that can talk to the youth and, and see what, what jobs they're wanting to get into. Uh, I know there's vocational training at Duncan. Uh, they could be implement more vocational training or give more access to, to vocational training. I think that would help out tremendously. To the future and education is key to have any gainful employment. So I'm really holding the school districts accountable for uh, the roles that they play in educating our students uh, and our young adults is a, is, a, is a major factor. The second thing I think we should focus on specifically in, in my community in District 3 uh, should be uh, some vocational training opportunities as well as uh, creating partnerships with the trade unions and our developers and investors uh, as, they, as they build and expand. One of the things our office is working on is as developers come to our area to build, is to create community benefit agreements that will benefit uh, people that actually live in those areas. Our office currently right now has a piece of legislation going through that mirrors the, the California High Speed Rail Association National Charter Highway Policy. Which your, your, your time is up. What would be your strategy for closing gaps in the city's general fund? You want to? We can start from this and work our way that way. What would be your strategy for closing gaps in the city's general fund? Sorry, I would have to research. Since we're at this end, we'll go to Mr. Uh, Baines next. And then. Go ahead. Yeah, if, we're talking about, if we're talking about closing the, the gaps in the general fund, really the problem with our general fund right now uh, are not expenses, but it's really revenue. Uh, so one of the proposals that I have uh, been very public about is uh, a general sales tax that allows us to put more revenue to the general fund. We've cut tremendously from our services over the last seven or eight years um, the Great Recession that we just went through. So we really have cut our services to the bone. I, I actually think that our city is probably something close to service, service and solvent. And what we need to do is focus on revenues. And I believe those revenues should 
Uh, uh, that's the question you need to ask the mayor. Uh, I don't have the answer for uh, the general fund. All I can speak for is my area. And uh, what I notice is we don't have, uh, it's been neglected for very, very long. There's a lot of money in the system, period. But like I said, it's not being allocated correctly. And people understand what I'm saying in this community. Some people in the audience may not understand, but from talking with people in the community, they understand what I'm saying. And they agree with what I'm saying. As a candidate, I represent the people. I'm not speaking for myself, I'm speaking for the people. And as far as the general fund is concerned, my concern is making sure that the people have what they need, which is resources and opportunity. That's my answer. Well, if um, we would get the enterprise folks out here, we prioritized these jobs in um, these departments, the city hall in 1976. If we get all the public works, all the utilities, all these people in there that's not supposed to be there and give the, the money and the business back to the city of Fresno, we'd have billions of dollars. The city council was a redevelopment agency. The redevelopment agency board, that's a complex venture. We got all, all that redevelopment money. You take a mayor, a city council, and the, uh, that makes the original joint power spine, that's the story. That's the ballpark. That's all that our money. They took all the money from Southwest Prison. We got Southwest Prison 1, 2, 3, and 4. They got bugs all over this place. Nobody has held accountable. We want our CBG money, homes finance money. We want everything that we need that, that due to us from Southwest Prison. The money is there. You guys just bull crap with these folks. We need our money back, but you guys took away from us and took us off the general plan and made us edit the district, which it was from the beginning, and now we don't even allow it on the general plan. We're not even on the general plan. Give us our money back and we can show you what we can do. You know, when, when Mayor Swearingen took office six years ago, there were 4,000 city employees. Now there are only 3,000 city employees. This is regrettable because Folks out in the neighborhoods are feeling the crunch of these cuts. They're not getting the services they're used to. Uh, this was the strategy for closing gaps in the city's general fund. The city had to contract. The city got a lot smaller than it used to be. Uh, as we move through the future, things are looking better. Things are looking up. The sales tax revenue is a little bit up. The property tax revenue is also increasing. So as, as revenues increase, it's important to, to hold the line on our spending and not to vote yes and, and give a stamp of approval to any idea that comes perhaps from the administration or, or other sources. The idea on the city council for at least the next four years is to hold the line on wasteful spending. Then we can start to make smart votes and return services to the neighborhoods we represent. Thank you. Uh, expanding on uh, Mr. Olivier's uh, partial concept, exactly, I've been, uh, uh, Coming up with this, we've got to cut waste at city government. We need to get rid of consultants. Any project comes up, there goes a million dollars here, a million dollars there, two million here. SMG Corporation, they're running the uh, Southern Arena and, and uh, other parts of Fresno. I think there's only a handful of events that occur there. Otherwise, that's a big empty building with air conditioning and heating going to waste out the door. Uh, when you cut waste, then that provides money for the people, for the city better safety, public safety, better services, liaison, and also these other work projects, uh, building, and then also bring in uh, big companies for, to provide jobs. But the point is, cut waste. So our, our city budget is funded mostly by property taxes and uh, somewhat by sales taxes. And one of the things that we need to do to, to stop the bleeding and stop, uh, we need to stop subsidizing uh, developments on the outside of town. We're spending a lot of money providing infrastructure for new developments where people don't even live yet instead of using those resources to maintain our existing neighborhoods which would increase the value of the property in, in those neighborhoods and therefore uh, increase the revenues into the city general fund. Um, and when we do have future new developments and newer neighborhoods, they need to be within the city limits. There's a big push right now to go against the will of the people and allow for an expansion of the city limits and the sphere of influence and developments outside of the current city limits. And when that happens, um, 
the, the property taxes go more to the county than they do to the city, as opposed to uh, development inside the city limits, where we, the city receives more of the revenue. Yes, we did experience a very tough recession over the last um, six years, uh, but I do believe, um, like mentioned uh, previously, that better days are ahead of us. And we are seeing um, increases in our, sales, in our sales tax as well as in our property um, taxes. And so what I want to make sure that we do is that um, we are investing in our neighborhoods, um, but we do have to be prudent um, how we do it. Investment does create prosperity for um, our communities, and that, in, that means um, higher property values and people are spending uh, money if they have a job. So we need to make sure that our city is working for everyone, um, that we are uh, being mindful of the types of uh, consultants that we are hiring at City Hall. I would like us to, to see that um, we bring to council anything that will be above $15,000, because I want to hold the line on on some of the private consultants that are being hired from our city. Cut the fat. Mr. Rashad nailed it. He implied, I'm going to spell it out. A few weeks ago, there was an article in the paper about uh, a low-income housing on the corner of Ellen Stanislaus that, for whatever reason, didn't get built. But that minister out on Cornerstone got 600k out of the deal, and they didn't make him pay that back. The developer who started it but didn't finish it got a little over a million dollars. He didn't have to pay that back. But we got, we referring to city, Fresno City, got deemed by HUD for $1.3 million or $1.4 million that over three years we have to pay back. We, the city, have to pay back. That's the fact I'm talking about. I'm sick and tired of Fresno pandering to the developers. And nobody else is saying that. Transparency and accountability at the top. What on earth are we doing having the mayor pay $125,000 a year for her PR person while she gallivants around the state running for controller? Someone needs to explain that to me. The city of Fresno is the fifth largest city in the state of California, but we have the 10th, we have the 10th size general fund budget. At, it's relatively small. And that's because of a couple of things. We have not diversified our local economy. We have not embraced our agricultural uh, economy as well. We have not done anything to create industrial zones for agribusiness in the city of Fresno. We have not done a top-down review to see how the city of Fresno is or is not capturing potential revenue. There's probably hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars a year that we are not capturing from local businesses because we don't have the appropriate staff in the finance department to ensure they're paying their business license fees. And lastly, what's most important to me is we have to expedite the permitting process in the city of Fresno. No economic development project, case in point, the El Paseo project in Herndon and Golden State. Seven years, seven years it took to create 750 jobs, a $74 million project because we allow other people to control our future. I think one of the strategies for Closing the uh, gaps in the general fund is go not just going through the budget with a fine tooth comb, but it's going through all city spending with a fine tooth comb. It's ensuring that we do not have any unused cell phones, unused landlines. It's ensuring that you know the, the small spending, which can result in a large cost saving benefit. As an employer, I understand some of those benefits and how to be able to do that. But secondly, it's really looking at you know the resources that we spend throughout the city. It's ensuring that we do not pave the same city, the same street north of Shaw three, four times within you know five years. It's looking at you know the entire city is not just north of Shaw, it's south of Shaw. And the majority of the council members do represent South of Shaw. So it's forming a coalition with you know for the council members who do represent South of Shaw and being able to understand that we can have voice together and we can stand to close some of those gaps but also that we can have some of those discretionary spendings back south of Shaw, but also to ensure that we don't have the frivolous out-of-town spending by in hiring lawyers, which cost nearly a million dollars. Thank you. Thank you. A uh, few people are really honest about it. Um, are we close to gap is, uh, it's really mismanagement of money. We've been wasting a lot of money in uh, projects that have failed. 
Right now, I've got 16 to 20 million dollars. I've been running for, uh, got into policy for quite a few years. And for 20 years, I've been hearing about the development of revitalism in downtown. You know, it's gotta come to a stop. You know, that 16 to 20 million can be used in our district. You know, there has been a lot of false promises that have been given to these uh, residents. You know, their neighborhoods are depreciating, their schools are depreciating, and it's sickening, you know. That is a waste of money. It's mismanaged. Be honest with yourself. It is mismanaged the money. Because every time you turn around, we don't have no money, and all of a sudden you have you have money again. How is that happening? That is embarrassing to this city. And the way we do this, I am not for taxes. I will not lay people off. I will not um, cut people's pay unless it's mine. If I'm a city councilman, I will first cut my pay. That's the first thing. What we really need to do is bring jobs to Fresno. That's how we build uh, revenue here. Thank you. And our final question. What will you do to create equitable opportunities for African Americans in your office and appointments? We can start this in, Mr. King. Go back. Uh, repeat that again, please. What will you do to create equitable opportunities for African Americans in your office and appointments? Um, what I'll do is um, I'll be fair. Uh, I, would, I mean, I would be based on uh, the education. And what we need to do is uh, follow up on certain kind of educational skills. Um, we need to uh, build apprenticeship programs allocate our funds correctly. You know, that's what, uh, mainly the thing is, I'm equal, you know. I, I'm, I, I'm, how can I say this? I give equal opportunity to everyone, you know, and I will hire anybody that is uh, qualified for these positions. And most of all, is what I'm really, um, <clears throat> what I'm really uh, going for is, um, I'm really concerned with my district first. You know, everything is our district first. I know those are important questions and everything, but my district is first. It comes to this district it has been uh, neglected for almost eight years, and I will not tolerate this no more. Thank you. To create equitable opportunities in my appointment to my office, um, one of the things that I've been advocating really strongly is establishing neighborhood advisory groups. And to do that, I think you can't just have you know, neighborhood advisory groups comprised, comprised of one demographic. They need to be an equitable, you know, um, an equitable disbursement of all the demographics. So it's really looking at the district and being able to ascertain, okay, you know, if African Americans comprise, you know, 15% of this of this portion of the district, then they need to comprise 15% of the, uh, of, excuse me, of the people who are established in that neighborhood advisory group, and that would provide them equitable opportunities. In the apportionment and uh, as appointments in my office you know as an employer I've actually employed African Americans and I've, my family's continued to do it so my family's employed the Tillmans who have been truck drivers for over 50 years I've continued to do so once I took over once I took over the operations of my family's trucking company and it's really being able to say it's not based upon your race or color it's being able to, to provide the job based upon your skill thank you it's really critical if you look at all the boards and commissions in, in the city of Fresno that it does have a true reflection of the city of Fresno itself. Council members have done a very good job at working with cha local chambers of commerce, local organization groups to make sure the best and the brightest serve on these commissions. That is exactly what it's all about. If you look at me, if you look at all of us here, we're going to be reaching out to you to make sure that those that would like to serve on a commission that we help them through the application process. Anybody that wants to serve and has the qualifications to serve, they should have the opportunity to do so. When it comes to the mayor's appointments, I do believe that the council needs to look before we actually authorize and say, yes, we accept these appointments, that it's a reflection of our community. If you look at our planning commission, I think we could do a much better job in making sure our planning commission is much more diverse, but we also need to encourage a community to apply. And that's where each and every one of you will come in. Thank you. I have over 30 years of cultural diversity training, and race is an issue in this town. There ain't no two ways about it. The way that you get African Americans more involved with government, and then that leads to employment and exposure, is you make a commitment to the people, like right now. 
Reverend Floyd Harris consults me regularly, met with him about three weeks ago. He bombarded me with 60 questions on what's going on in West Fresno. He's very good at verbally beating me up, but it's good because it's right in the front of my brain. He's committed to help me walk the precincts, etc. Don Riddlesprigger is one of my advisors. I have a commitment to the African American community <laughs> for one reason and one reason only. It's synonymous to me with the Southeast Asian, the Latino, and the in other indigenous populations in Fresno. Once left out, we're all left out. That's how I translate that. And I have a commitment to making sure that African Americans, just like the rest of us, are included. It's gotta be that way or it's not the whole community. I believe that uh, not only should our appointment staff working at City Hall be a reflection of our community, but I also believe that our City Council should be reflective of our community. If you guys look at the City Council right now, women are not represented. Women are not represented. Think about that when you go home today. Our voices are being heard when we're shaping policies that are impacting our children, our families. Think about it. In my district, 53% of the voters are women. And I believe that not only are African Americans and women not being represented, so I, my commitment is really to do outreach, work with the organizations that put this event together. That is why I have the support of um, trustee Eric Payne and leaders like Dick Keyes. And my commitment is also to mentor, mentorship. I'm going to create, when elected, uh, young council members uh, training and, and group for high school students. And that's where we start. We start with our young people. One thing that uh, impacts the equitable opportunities is the ability to uh, get to and from your job on the bus. And, uh, it was disappointing that the bus rapid transit system is proposed. It originally was going to be an L-shaped Blackstone and Kings Canyon, and I pointed out to Oliver Baines that Kings Canyon becomes Ventura, which becomes C Street, which goes out to the new veterans home, and the BRT next day should go out to there. And the way that it ended up, Shaw Avenue is going to get bus rapid transit before uh, C Street does, which is disappointing. And I think that really does impact the opportunities for, uh, especially for people in this neighborhood right here, but in, also in my district. And uh, the Carrie mentioned the boards and commissions, and uh, District 7 is the only district that does not have a general plan implementation committee anymore. And uh, I would start by reinstating that. And going deeper into each neighborhood should have uh, engagement. Thank you. Currently in my uh, committee, I do have an African-American working with me. And uh, when I was with the uh, Fresno Police Department, I uh, got to walk the uh, Chinatown, which is sort of the beginning the corner of Westside Fresno. I have many friends here, play baseball here. Uh, in my office, I promise you I will have an African-American, at least one representative of this district, even though my district is District 7. But District 7 is the center core of the heart of Fresno. Uh, it touches all districts. It's pretty much uh, Blackstone Avenue, First Avenue, Larry Avenue to uh, Gettysburg. And along with that, I also want to create a path with internship uh, programs working in my office and also scholarships. Because we have to plant seeds. We have to keep the ball rolling. We have to get people, young people interested in government, have them participate. And uh, that's my commitment here. Thank you. Since I came to the Fresno City Council in December of 2010, I've had black interns, I've had Latino interns, and I've had white interns. We get applications from everyone. The cream rises to the top. We hire them. Everyone I've had work for me has done a great job. As far as what can I do uh, to advance the equitable opportunities of African Americans in my appointments, I meet with everyone. I meet with everyone regardless of their race, creed, or religion. I take every meeting that I'm asked for and I return every phone call from every constituent and I'm very proud of being, uh, giving out my cell phone number to my constituents and trust me to use it 24-7. I'm very proud of being accessible and I'm very proud of my record on uh, creating equitable opportunities. But well, I see we're going to have a trouble at City Hall, especially with me, because I see racism already. The question says, 
well, how many African Americans, or how are you going to put African Americans to work in your office? Because affirmative action. They took away Bill Rivers, and you know this, all about bond money from, for that convention center and from Southwest Fresno Tax Center. A lot of it is, you know this. And then when uh, Bill Rivers told me himself, he went, as he was supposed to be the secretary, they just wanted to take our school. And nobody ever answered the question. So what I'm saying is, it's racism. We're going to have to take control of our own destiny. Put our kids in the schools, put, put our kids in the training programs, let these old these teachers accountable for the action. If they don't want to teach these kids, our tax money pays for every district. All your districts come from the tax money for all these people. Not only just for uh, your district. And no, I haven't seen an African American but one up there on the city council doing something, she's bringing coffee. We want to know how many people is working up there. And I see here, it's a racism board that we're going to have we're going to have problems. That's what Barbara runs. Uh, well, my whole staff is uh, black and Latina. If you European want to work with us, come through. We'll help you. We'll, we'll work with you. Um, I want to say that you need to watch for these election day candidates. Election day candidates. Oh, they campaign and they put these signs all over the city. they got all this energy. Then once you get in office, we don't hear from them. What, what happened? Where, where was all the enthusiasm and the participation and, 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 and the engagement with the community and letting the community know what's going on? Oh, it's over now. I got my seat. Got my check. I'm good. And that's what you need to watch out for. You know, uh, me speaking and making it better for the African Americans is doing exactly what I'm doing. I'm not intimidated by anybody here but not here. Simple as that. I think if we, uh, you know, I wouldn't say that if there's a, he has an internship or apprentice, uh, that would help gain the skills uh, that they would need to, uh, to go or apply for other jobs, and, uh, and that's done there. Uh, being accessible, as I said, giving your number out, meeting every uh, appointment, no matter who it is, just continuing those steps. Diversity in, in, in the office is be the best thing. You know, the different, different inputs from the different races. Uh, counts up. Uh, before we have uh, one last aspect of this, and it was to allow a candidate to ask another candidate a follow-up question. And it has to be a follow-up question to one of the questions we've already asked. Is there anybody who wants to participate? I'm going to talk to Mr. Olivia. He's in City Hall. What can we do to make it better for, uh, for Southwest Fresno to make sure that we have the opportunity like all the other districts? Because I've talked on all these issues on all districts and help everybody, everything for their district. Now, what can we do to put some of that power to Southwest Fresno so we can have the same thing as we got forward for you all? Thank you, Barbara, for asking that question. I think the most important thing we can do for folks here in Southwest Fresno is to allow people who don't have cars uh, to have access to the rest of the city. We talked a little bit about the bus rapid transit program. There's a reason why the bus drivers, why the ATU supports me. That's because they know that our current fax system is a failure. We can't get people home from work at night. Buses stop running at 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. We can't get people home. That fail, that failure affects the people in Southwest Fresno as they go to access education at Fresno City and Fresno State, Willow International. Buses don't run if you get out of the night class. If they're trying to get to employment at a Walmart or at a construction project, our fact system has failed them. So that's why the bus drivers support me. Because I have been a solid voice throughout my four years on the city council to get people around the city. That includes black people, it includes Latinos, it includes white people, young and old. If we can successfully fix our, our transportation system, we can get people access to different parts of the city and different amenities that our city does offer. Thank you for that. Okay, thank you. Who else wanted to ask a question of another candidate? Okay, come in. Um, in the first question, Mr. Wells, this question is for you. Uh, it was, you mentioned something about Walmart-type jobs. 
I worked with Walmart stores to help them bring a new super center to District 7 to occupy a blighted building and create hundreds of jobs. District 3 council member Oliver Baines and members of this very community have been very public in their desire to bring a Walmart here. However, at a labor forum in January, you pledged to oppose Walmart no matter what. My question for you, as District 7 council member, will you reconsider your hardline stance and work with council member Baines, should he be reelected, and the people in this very room to bring Walmart jobs, healthy foods, and tax revenue to Southwest Fresno? I'll be very happy to bring jobs and healthy foods and tax revenues to, to Southwest Fresno. I'm, I'm very disappointed that Walmart and it came in under the radar on Blackstone Avenue in the old Mervyn's building. I saw in the newspaper that Mr. Olivier uh, embraced that as his crime-fighting strategy by chasing the criminals back into the shadows. But as far as job development, I would be uh, very, very supportive of uh, paving the way and facilitating uh, the more. I think we have one supermarket in this community and we desperately need another. I would love it to be locally owned. And Walmart? <coughs> Well, I would love the super. The question is Walmart. The qu so Walmart, I maintain my position of not wanting to subsidize and facilitate the uh, Walmart coming into our communities. Um, I would rather uh, uh, keep the, the current regulations and zoning and everything in place and not waive them just because it's a Walmart superstore. I think we could do a lot better than that. Anybody else have a question to another candidate? Okay. Oh, you had a question? I do. <coughs> to which candidate? Uh, for our current council member, Mr. Clint Olivia. Oh. Uh, and it's regarding the jobs question. Uh, on the heels of uh, voting to privatize the trash collection and then laying off code enforcement officers, uh, Mr. Olivier, uh, wanted to regulate the uh, massage industry, primarily in Blackstone and the Newbit City. Well, he worked with the faith community to do that. In the same city council meeting, the faith community had been working with Oliver Baines on another regulation to put limitations on the ability of predatory lenders to uh, continue to, to set up more and more payday lending operations. And uh, Mr. Olivier voted against that. Thankfully, the ordinance passed. But uh, I'm curious about uh, Mr. Olivier's um, job creation strategy as it uh, pertains to regulating and why the, that particular day was interesting. Uh, one vote to regulate and one vote not to regulate. What's the question? The question is um, job creation, or, or well, you mentioned the uh, quality of jobs. I think the, the trash collection jobs um, belong. Uh, thankfully, they, they are still good city uh, union jobs. And um, to explain your stance on not regulating predatory lenders. So, what's the question? Why did you want to regulate massage parlors but not predatory lenders? Uh, the massage parlors, there were 30 of them five years ago. There are over 220 of them in the city of Fresno, and there's a cluster of them in the 7th District. What we did was we had a state nonprofit agency that cities all around the state are going to, to license massage providers. We currently, the old system, we had this, a city detective making a whole lot of money that was actually stuck behind a mountain of paperwork licensing individual massage providers. So what we did is we kicked that service out to this nonprofit. Excuse me. The, the state now license our, licenses our massage providers and the detective is freed up to actually go out and look for brothels and prostitution and locations of prostitution in our city. We, they just raided one two weeks ago, it was in the B, and we're cleaning up Blackstone. As far as voting no on, on, I believe the vote was to cap the number of, um, of check cashing and payday advance places, I didn't think a cap would be appropriate. We're talking about hundreds of jobs that these places provide in our city, and the way the economy is right now, I had to make that tough call, and I voted for the jobs. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
I have a question for Mr. Uh, Saldate. Do you have any specific programs to better Fresno District 7 and Fresno overall, including 93706? I don't have any current programs right now. Uh, the only thing that I'm doing is working with a couple of uh, church churches and working to help the homeless right now. Uh, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, I do want to get into helping some of the, the, the kids that are, were in foster care. Uh, when they turn 18, they are kicked out of the, the system. They don't have any help. Uh, that's another thing that I'm trying to get going right now. Uh, as for 93706, uh, I have not. Uh, I haven't had any thought into helping that, that out yet. Uh, I'm going to try to stick with uh, my district for now, because uh, that's what I'm going to be uh, applying for, is, is my district. That would be my first concern. Okay. Is this a wrap? <laughs> Thank you all very much. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. You all have a closing. You have a closing statement. I'm sorry, there's so many, so it's hard. But each of you have the opportunity, you have a minute for your closing statement. Uh, my name is Mauro Saldate again. Uh, I've been an EMT serving for uh, 12 years, responding to your 911 calls. Uh, I think some change is needed. Uh, I, you won't see my signs up. I have a total of three signs. Uh, I don't see a point in Brady getting signs because it's a uh, you're putting money into it instead of using that money that could be going into something else. Uh, helping the homeless or whatever the need is. Uh, to me, that, that seems like a waste of money. Uh, uh, just remember me. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I really don't have anything else to say. Uh, I'm a petitioner. Uh, we have a petition to uh, repeal the water rates. They're going to be double. They're going to be high. The water bills get ready to be high. Um, we have a petition to stop that. And we need everybody to sign it. We need everybody to sign it. I'm one of those guys that's working in the community to help the community. It's not about the certain tide and how well you can speak, although those count, that matters. It's about what you want and what you do for the community, for the people. And speaking and representing the people. That's why I say I'm the people's choice because as a candidate, I represent the will of my community, District 3. And I need your support. I need your vote. Make sure you vote Eddie Rashad for District 3. And, and this is my mother right here. God bless her. She inspired me tremendously to run. And that's why I'm going to keep on keeping on. Because God said these kids getting killed, murdered, nobody's in the convo, no jobs, nothing for them to do. And I want the children to have a better life. We didn't bring a child in this world to just be killed. A lot of mothers and fathers cried. So what I want to see that happen as the whole board of city council, whoever's elected, and I hope it be me, because I want to bring this to a close because I want to retire with victories on my back. Letting the older folks know, I just didn't sit back and let nothing happen to do something for West Fresno, Southwest Fresno. And the only thing I want to say, if everybody can come aboard from Southwest Fresno, like we have with all of your districts, we can build a bicycle town site fast. Now you're talking about Walmart. I was on the on a board for eight years, West Fresno. My name is on this chart right here, Academy. Uh, we had a Walmart plan for that across uh, this field out here. I got three acres of close to back to back. We had a big shopping center coming up out here. This big school up here. If Mary Square is going to put her name on this big school out here, 287 meters, mm -hmm. and we can put something over here for our district to help these people. And my folks, in any color over here, we can make it. Thank you very much, Barbara Hunt. Thank you, Barbara. You know, I have a constituent in my district named Tony Barbara. And Tony's a stay-at-home father. And one day, he got my cell phone number somehow, and he called it. And he said, you know, over at, over at my kid's school, it's Pyle Elementary, 
He said, if things are unsafe, you've got to see what this place looks like. There are cars coming this way and that way, and kids are almost getting hit. This place is an absolute mess. So I made an appointment with him, and I went out there. I called out the traffic. I saw it for myself, and then I called out the traffic engineers. Traffic engineers went out there. This is a service that everyone has access to. Traffic engineers went out there. They conducted a study and found that it was unsafe around Pyle Elementary and had been unsafe for years. What did we do? They came in. They rerouted the traffic. They restriped the roads. They put in new signs. This is all included with your taxpayers' money. Public safety. Keeping kids safe. This guy came up to me and he thanked me with tears in his eyes for being accessible and for helping his kids stay safe in his neighborhood. That's what it's all about, folks. I'm Clint Olivier. I'm asking for four more years. Thank you. Art Gonzalez. Public safety. I'm the only candidate that has risked his life for the public good. For Fresno and other cities and other jurisdictions have arrested murderers, rapists, child molesters, you name it. I caught them. And they got arrested by me 100% conviction rate. That's what I offer my dedication to public safety, public service. I've also been a substitute teacher. Uh, I've taught at Juvenile Hall and uh, also boot camp after the weather when it was operating. I've been in the homes, I've been in the classroom, dedicated all my life's work has been for public service. Currently, I'm also a real estate agent, so I'm also business savvy, and I want to see prosperity, and more opportunities for Fresno for everyone here. What I offer is a fresh voice instead of we already got a taste of this victory. I haven't picked on anybody. We need a fresh voice who's open and would appreciate your support. Thank you. So I'm Mike Wells. I'm running for City Council in District 7. And uh, like I said, it's an outgrowth of the community engagement that we've been doing for the last four years when I was with Fresno Metro Ministry. And even longer than that, I, I think that uh, members of the community need to have a voice in the decision-making process that affects their families and our neighborhoods. And so that's what I uh, pledge to bring to uh, City Council in District 7. I'm proud to have the uh, support and the endorsements of the Fresno County uh, Democrat Central Committee, the Central Valley Progressive PAC, I mentioned already the Central Labor Council and all of the affiliates, or almost all of the affiliate uh, organizations, and the Fresno Partnership, as well as several others. Um, we just need to to take back uh, uh, City Hall, and especially District 7, which is a real working class district that deserves uh, the, uh, to have the community members have a voice in the decision making process. Thank you. Thank you again for hosting this forum. Um, I, as Morales de Soria, am committed to really be, bringing a fresh and new perspective to City Hall, something that is much needed. I'm gonna be a champion for working families, I believe that the, my track record, my work experience will be beneficial to not only District 1, but the city of Fresno. I have, I'm very proud to have the support um, of our working men and women of this city. I have the support of business leaders, education leaders, and our community leaders that represent uh, the city of Fresno and former leaders. I know that um, it is because of my commitment to giving back to the community, to making the city of Fresno a better place, um, a place where everyone has the opportunity to prosper, um, that I have garnered a wealth of support. I look forward to working with you, with all of you, to really enhance our city and provide opportunities. You don't mind if I stand, do you? Sure. It's kind of my trademark. I managed a mental health program for children for seven years. I left that last October to do this, but during that seven years, I set up six sites within six different communities within Fresno County. I created a resource list of 164 different organizations, and then I whittled it down after about six months to 93 active, that's groups that were on call, ready to help me work with children and their parents. That's what I do. That's what I bring to the table. I'm a social worker. I'm a community advocate. I've been here since 1999, kicking ass and taking names. Excuse my English, but that's how I feel about it. Got a lot of energy. And Rashad, just for the record, 
I'm not one of those blah, 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 yippity skippities, and then I disappear after the election. Not even close, because if you'll check out my brochure in the corner right table there, what you're going to see is a laundry list of phenomenal projects that I've seen through succession and succeed. And after June 3, I'll continue to do all of those projects. Nobody up here can say that. You need to vote for me if you want serious change. Thank you. Kerry Catalano, I've been a champion for every president for 25 years, making sure those that want a job have a job, making sure that those that need a meal have a meal, making sure that those that need access to quality education have that access. Local government is not completely broken, folks. Fresno is a great place to live. I never left. I went to City College, I went to Fresno State, I built my professional career right here. Right here in Fresno. No one possibly could love more, maybe there is, that loves Fresno more than I do. But let me tell you this, I wanna make sure anybody that wants a job can get a job. People that need their sidewalk repaired in their neighborhood can get their sidewalk repaired. Those that don't have a sidewalk can get a sidewalk. There are so many neighborhoods left behind and I plan to do all that I can with my colleagues in the administration to fix that. My name is Kerry Catalano and I am a true president. Thank you. Again, thanks. Thank I want to thank everyone for attending today. And first and foremost, let me just start by reiterating the three most important things in which we were talking about today, which was business opportunity, balancing the budget, and creating equ equitable opportunity for all. As a long, I come from a long lineage of employers where we've been in a, tr in a trucking company for the past 50 years, and I've taken over for the past six years. Not only have I taken a company on the verge of bankruptcy and where there was a state regulation that was trying to put us out of business. I personally got the opportunity to preserve those jobs, not only for my family, but for other small West Side trucking companies there, for other small operations. But I also opened my own law firm. And secondly, I had the opportunity to balance the budget for the trucking company and also my own law firm. So I have utilized these skills personally as a private employer, and I have utilized these skills in public policy. In creating equitable opportunity for all, I've done so by being able to hire a diversified workforce. I do so every time I go out and I start the season, and I will do so every time if I'm elected for some Fresno City Council. So it's my fervent hope that you'll go out, you'll elect Mark Castro on June 3rd so we can create better jobs for a better president. Thank you. Hi, once again, thank you for inviting me. Um, as I've gone uh, door to door, uh, what I really hear is the trust issue, and that's what my main concern is. I want to build that trust issue with the residents, I tell them I'm going to be in their neighborhoods, I'm going to hold meetings in schools, in their businesses. That's the type of person I want to be. I don't just want to knock on the door and you never see me again. No, they will see me again. That's the kind of person I am. I have a backbone. I know how to be accountable. I know how to make decisions. I know how to be a man and fight for other people. And that's what we need today. Someone who will stand up and be with these people. You know, especially west of 99, it has been neglected for so many years. People want a medical facility, a grocery store, they want development there, you know, because it's, it'll make, it'll be, it'll be convenient for a lot of people today. And that's what my main concern is, is this district. I want to do everything for Fresno, but my main concern is this district. It has been neglected for eight years. It's got to stop. Thank you. And uh, we'll have Mr. Baines by phone. Discussion for the city council candidates and by the